Terry Moran, who has covered the Supreme Court for years, and he's at the court tonight. At the Supreme Court today, an historic upheaval. In a sweeping ruling that overturned a half a century of precedence, five justices ended the right of American women to choose abortion under the Constitution. The court upheld Mississippi's ban on abortions after 15 weeks by a 6-3 to three vote, and five of those justices went even farther, voting to overturn Roe versus Wade itself. Today's opinion is nearly identical to the draft that leaked from the court last month. Justice Samuel Alito rejecting the 1973 landmark ruling in Roe, scorning the idea that the Constitution protects a right to choose abortion. Roe was on a collision course with the Constitution from the day it was decided, Alito wrote. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. Chief Justice John Roberts joined the conservative majority in upholding the Mississippi law, but he insisted the court did not need to overturn Roe. Instead, he searched for some middle ground, pleading. None of this, however, requires that we also take the dramatic step of altogether eliminating the abortion right first recognized in Roe. And from the liberal wing, a scathing, agonized dissent. Justice Stephen Breyer arguing that Alito's ruling is based on nothing more than the fact that three new justices appointed by Donald Trump, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, cast decisive votes to overturn Roe. Neither law, nor facts, nor attitudes have provided any new reasons to reach a different result than Roe did. All that has changed is this court, Breyer wrote. And in the dissent's last line, Breyer, along with Justices Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor, struck a somber note. With sorrow for this court, but more for the many millions of American women who have today lost a fundamental constitutional protection, we dissent. The impact of today's ruling will be immediate. Thirteen states have trigger laws that end access to abortion now that Roe is overturned. Thirteen more states are now expected to move quickly to ban abortion. Abortion rights groups are bracing for this new reality in America. We certainly are going to be doing everything we can to maintain abortion access in the states that we expect to see coming hard at trying to ban abortion to keep access to services as long as possible. But for those opposed to abortion rights who have fought for this day for decades, there is victory and vindication. We've been working on this for actually more than 50 years before Roe v. Wade, uh, working to protect unborn children. We have um, certainly in the pro-life movement, a lot of support and programs, uh, centers, pregnancy centers that will help uh, women. In a written statement, former President Trump calling today's ruling the biggest win for life in a generation. And Trump takes credit for recent conservative Supreme Court decisions made possible, he claims, because I delivered everything as promised, including nominating and getting three highly respected and strong constitutionalists confirmed to the United States Supreme Court. At the White House, President Biden warned of dire consequences as a result of this decision. With Roe gone, let's be very clear, the health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. It was three justices named by one president, Donald Trump, who were the core of today's decision to upend the scales of justice and eliminate a fundamental right for women in this country. Former President Barack Obama tweeting, the Supreme Court not only reversed nearly 50 years of precedent, it relegated the most intensely personal decision someone can make to the whims of politicians and ideologues, attacking the essential freedoms of millions of Americans. And Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi accused Republicans of trying to drag women into the past. Because of Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, and the Republican Party, their supermajority in the Supreme Court, American women today have less freedom than their mothers. What this means to women is such an insult. It's a slap in the face to women about using their own judgment to make their own decisions about their reproductive freedom. And Terry Moran joins us from the Supreme Court tonight. And Terry, we took note that Justice Clarence Thomas today writing a concurring opinion, uh, calling on his colleagues to use this same reasoning uh, to now revisit other cases like uh, contraception and same-sex marriage based on the legal reasoning used in this particular ruling? He sure did, David. Justice Alito insists this opinion should only apply to abortion, but the reasoning the court used to overturn Roe versus Wade, that can be used against other cases. And Justice Thomas calls on his colleague to reconsider the cases that established the right to gay marriage, to contraception, even to private sexual conduct. 
in dissent, Justice Breyer, warning the country no one should be confident that this majority is done with its work. David? We can see the protests on both sides right there behind you. Terry Moran leading us off tonight. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.